Hey people, I, I had some questions from my previous video, which was the Google Keyword Tool 2010 AdWords Research. We have a user here, 10viewer1, was asking, Hey Terrapin, looking forward to where to go from here. Uh, how do you save and organize your keywords to certain campaigns? Regardless of whether you're using AdWords or whether you're just doing this for SEO sake, this, the process is going to be the same. Keywords are going to be organized the same way regardless whether it's used for SEO or AdWords. So let's take a look at the AdWords tool and let's maybe take a look at how to get that data out of there in the first place. So you can see here, I am now on the Google AdWords keyword tool. You can see here, I've done some searching on the topic of dog training, dog train, and dog obedience. One thing that I want to do is get this data outside of the Google AdWords tool and get it into Excel. So all we're gonna do is we are going to select the download button here and it says download all 645. So now I'm assuming at this point that you know how to uh, use the Google AdWords keyword tool. So again, this video is really just about what do I do with this data? How do I wrangle this data, more importantly? So now I've downloaded this data, and you can see there's a plethora of columns here. Uh, one column, uh, well, let's get rid of some of these columns. Let's clean this up, and let's make it a little bit easier to deal with. One column I don't really need to look at is the competition column. Competition column really is just a, a, a ratio or a number of how many people are advertising in it. Now. If you see, um, for example, 1.0, that means that that is the most competitive market or area that AdWords has. So when we look at dog training, it's averaging 0 0.5, 0 0.37, 0 0.6, so we'll call it maybe about a 0 0.5. So about half has about half as many competitors as the most competitive markets in Google AdWords. Now, I don't really find this data particularly useful. It's kind of neat to look at, but for the sake of this video, we're going to get that out of there. Now, we've also got the Google Trends in here, and this is going to tell us you know, where your searches go up and down type of thing. So we can see here for dog training, obviously from September and November, and then it kind of dies down here in May. So I don't need this data either. I'm going to get rid of that stuff and extract it from page. We don't need that. So now here's what we've got left here, really, is this core bit of information. So let's get this tidied up here, make it easier for you folks to see. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I am going to start clustering this data. Now, you're asking yourself, what the heck is clustering? To put it as simple as possible, a cluster is a group of keywords that you've identified where searchers are looking for the same solution. Or a cluster is a group of keyword phrases that are organized by the same intention. So let's take a look at some of these phrases here. We have a uh, dog training school. Now what we want to do is get all the school phrases together. Or if we have dog training tips, we want to get all the tips together so that in the end we're able to make sense of this giant mishmash of data. If you just look at this long list here, it's a little bit overwhelming. It's really hard to make sense of what is in here? What what are the trends that lie in here? It becomes very, very difficult. You know, we got dog training callers, we got regional phrases, people that want books. So what we need to do is organize that. And I'll give you a good analogy to think about. All of this data here, it's it's like a bowl of jelly beans. And if I asked you how many colors of each jelly bean do we have in here? It'd be very difficult to know. Now let's assume that each color of a jelly bean is a particular problem. So the only way you could figure out how many jelly beans or how many color of each jelly bean that you have in your bowl is to take those jelly beans, lay them out, put the reds in one corner, blue in another corner, yellow in another. And again, each one of these jelly bean colors represents a particular problem. So what we want to do is break down this data and help us understand what lies in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add myself a column. I'm going to call it cluster. And I'm going to add another column called subcluster. Now there's some neat little tricks you can do here. I'm going to select row two, and then I am going to go to view, and I am going to freeze this pane. So we're going to keep the top row. And what this does is it allows me to scroll through this data, and it keeps this top thing in top here, or it keeps it in place, sorry. And that way, you know, when you're scrolling, you don't wonder what column it is. When you go way down here, you're like, oh, what column's what? Well, this makes it pretty easy to figure that out. The first thing that I'm going to do is start looking at this list. And now one thing I see here is callers. So callers is a particular problem or a particular product. And I want to see what is all the stuff that relates to callers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these columns. And then I'm going to go to the data section. And I'm going to click on filter. So now what we're doing is we're going to use Excel here to extract all of the caller phrases. 
So what I do is now that I've got this drop down arrow, I'm going to go to text filter, then to contains. What I'm looking for is color. And I hit OK. And now we can see all of my color phrases are in here. So what I'm going to do is label this now as my first cluster, color. And I'm going to go all the way down, and I'm going to fill all the colors in. I'll give you an example of what a good subcluster is. Now a subcluster is just another particular problem that lies inside of here. So color is one problem, but there are more specific problems way down inside this. And one I see is remote dog training color. So the subcluster in this case is remote, oops, let's spell that right, and I'm going to fill it in here, remote, remote, remote. Now I also see electronic, for example, so let's go to this, electronic, and let's see, ah, we got some here, we got some here, got some here. Now again, I could use this search here. Uh, Again, if I wanted to find, if I had a lot of electronics, I could just simply paste electronic in there. And there we go. There's all our electronics. So there we go. Now we can see here we got three phrases for electronic and color. Now I'm going to keep on clustering this data. And one thing I want to look at is, you know, what are some other trends that lie in here? Now one I see is book. So now dog training, I'm going to fill in book. Now, I'm not going to do all of this data because it's probably going to be a little bit tedious for you to watch. But let's just maybe look at some of the other stuff here. Books on free books. Uh, we got hunting. Uh, I'm calling gun here. You can see that there's that phrase gun dog training books. I'm going to throw that all within hunting because really what we're looking for is phrases that have the same intention. So in this case, sometimes you know you maybe not going to find always the best way to fill in the subcluster, so don't sweat it too much. Uh, one particular example I see here is ebook. And so let me, I'm going to maybe do a little bit of time lapse here. You guys can sit back for a second. I'm going to speed this up and so you can get a better idea of what it is this data is going to look like. Okay, so I've done some basic clustering. Again, I'm not going to do all this data. I don't want to make this too tedious for you folks. So now, when I'm done with my clusters and my subclusters, and I've clustered as much as I can, you don't have to cluster everything, but you just want to cluster all of the obvious trends. And again, remember, clustering is just basically organizing your data by intention or by problem. And when I say intention, it, all I mean is, what is it that they want to do with this subject? What is the intention? within this dog training subject. And for example, in this one example here is career. So their intention is to find out how do I become a dog trainer, more or less is what the intention is about here. So people asking career information. So let's take a look at, let's assume that we've gone through, we've clustered all this. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the filter. So now we can see we've got a few phrases here clustered out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these columns and now I'm going to click the sort function. And the first thing that I'm going to sort by is cluster. And it's going to go from A to Z. And then I'm going to add another level. And I'm going to then sort it by the subcluster. And I'm going to add one more level. I'm going to add global monthly searches. And I'm going to go from largest to smallest. And this is all going to make sense. And then I'll maybe throw in one more. And that's the estimated average cost per click. And again, I'm going to go from highest to lowest. So. Excel is going to organize this data first by cluster, then by subcluster, then by global monthly search volume, then by estimated average cost per click. And this will make sense once you see the results. So I click OK. And now, so far, this is all the stuff that I have clustered. Now you can see there's a bunch of data down here that I haven't clustered. So you know that would be something I need to do to finish this off. So alphabetically, the first cluster is aggressive. And now you can see here, I now have global monthly searches in the highest demand. So aggressive dog training or dog training aggressive are the two most common variations when it comes to aggressive and dog training. So there's one of your keywords that you're going to want to look at is aggressive dog 
training has the highest demand. Next, when it comes into barking, we have stop dog barking and dog barking stop. So there's two combinations again under the category of barking. So problem number one is aggressive dogs. Problem number two is barking. And then within barking, we've got people asking questions about how to stop the dog from barking and tips. So if we're going to be writing articles or we're going to be creating website pages or products, we're going to use this information to break down all the discrete topics. If I've got a dog training website, I need to break this down into discrete logical chunks that people are looking for. So if someone's searching for aggressive dog training, we can then create a page specifically for that. So what we want to do is find out what people are looking for and supply them that exact solution. We're not trying to make one page that serves every possible search query. We're trying to make very, very specific pages. Now we're also going to have a better chance of ranking. Dog training, for example, is going to be very competitive. So some of these subtopics are going to be less competitive because everybody gravitates to the highest demand stuff. And if I had a dog training website, I would certainly be breaking it down into all of these subcategories and targeting all this sub stuff. Now, some of the information that you're going to be using here that we want to look at is obviously global monthly searches. Global monthly searches, obviously higher is better. How much do you need? That's really going to depend you know, what your, how much your profit margin is, what your conversion rates are. So let's maybe just do some really, really simple math here. If I can get a thousand people to come to my website a month and I have a 1% conversion rate, that's going to get me about 10 sales from a thousand clicks, assuming 1,000 visitors come to my site for a particular phrase at a 1% conversion rate. Now your conversion rate is going to vary depending on how good your sales copy is, how many other solutions are out there. If there are hundreds of other ebooks out there or training programs for dog training, you're going to have a lower conversion rate because the consumer has more options to choose from. So what we're looking for is higher demand or sorry, higher is better. Next column we're looking at is estimated average cost per click. This is going to give you an idea what it's going to cost, number one, to rank in Google. And we've got some particularly expensive phrases in here. We see things like gun dog training books, $3.69. So that's what the number one uh, bid is going to cost to get in there. So that's something to think about. If you have a 1% conversion ratio, and you're paying 3.69 cent or three dollars and 69 cents per click. Well, we can do the math on that. That's going to cost you 369 dollars to make that sale. So again, you want to look through this data and look at what is practical for me. You know, you're probably not going to find a lot of phrases for eight cents. The days of eight cent phrases are probably behind us. So, you know, dog training to me on, at the first blush looks a little bit competitive. Now, you know, if I'm selling a, a really high-end product, for example, you know, I'm selling maybe Corvette parts as an example, and I'm selling a $1,500 exhaust system, well, I might not mind paying a dollar per click because there's so much margin in my product. So if I was looking at ebooks and trying to sell ebooks on dog training, I would probably shy away from this topic. So let's recap here. Original question was, what do I do with this keyword data? How do I organize it? And so here we have is a good layout of how we're organizing, organizing this. And particularly the question asked about, how do I ad organize this for AdWords? So what, we're, what we would do is take this information and we would use this in AdWords. So one of our ad groups might be aggressive dog training. Another ad group might be barking. Uh, another ad group might be books. And so perhaps our book contains, you know, information on aggressive dogs, barking, that sort of thing. So we're going to target those very specific phrases and let them know that our solution handles this. And so what we want to do is target all of this stuff, if at all possible. So I hope this helps you understand what clustering is and what to do with your keyword data. I want to thank you for watching this video. Please, if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, uh, add me or subscribe to, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I really, I'm doing these videos really for just for education purposes. I'm not selling a program or a course, so please you know, send me some feedback. I want to make more videos as I get feedback from you guys. I would like to make a heck of a lot more videos. Uh, and then really, I just want to help people understand what it is that, that this topic is. And again, I'm not selling a single thing. I'm just trying to help you guys make sure that when you're doing this research that you understand what you're doing and then that you're moving in a methodical, logical, and thoughtful fashion. Again, thank you so much for coming by. Have yourself a great day.